gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Baron Millage. Within the next few decades, it seems likely that humanity will succeed at building artificial minds, and that these minds will rapidly come to outstrip our own intelligence across almost every task. This prospect is both awe-inspiring and terrifying. Artificial intelligence will be one of the greatest inventions that humanity has ever made, and also potentially its last. If we succeed, we will have solved deep questions that go right to the heart of the human condition. What is intelligence? How do our own minds work? Why and how do we think and experience the way that we do? My name is Dr. Baron Millage, and these questions have been an obsession of mine for much of the past decade. I did my PhD and postdoctoral work at the University of Oxford at the intersection of machine learning and neuroscience, where I tried to understand how intelligence manifests in both brains and machines. Now, I'm the co-founder and chief scientist of an AI startup called Zypha, where we're deeply engaged at the frontier of AI, training models across vi vision, language, and audio modalities, with the ultimate goal of understanding intelligence itself. As the theoretical physicist Richard Feynman once said, what we cannot create, we do not understand. This maxim applies very deeply to AI and neuroscience. Advances in AI have brought about an ever-growing understanding and insight into the workings of our own minds. While advances in neuroscience have inspired new methods in AI, have shed light on the limitations of existing systems, and even have illuminated the path to full AI. Today, I want to connect our knowledge of neuroscience to the recent rapid advances in artificial intelligence. I will cover the two fundamental and underlying principles that have driven these advances and show how they're manifested in your own brains. Then, using the brain as an example, I will cover some of the remaining steps on the road to artificial general intelligence and how insights from neuroscience can be used to address them. First, let's start out with some introductory neuroscience. At the highest level, the brain can be thought of composed into two parts, the cortex, which is behind me, and the subcortex. The cortex is the highly uniform outer sheet of the brain, which is where, like most of your primary intelligence, resides. It's split up into specialized areas, such as the visual cortex at the back of your brain, which handles your visual processing, the somatosensory and motor cortices in the middle, which handle your ability to sense, touch, and to move, and the prefrontal cortex at the front of your brain, which handles many of the core intellectual functionalities you have, like executive functioning, reasoning, logic, and planning. The subcortex, by contrast, is in the middle and bottom of your brain, and is much more heterogeneous. It's comprised of many specialized modules, each of which is designed for a particular task. Some of these are your core biological functions, such as maintaining bodily homeostasis and triggering fight or flight responses. The two areas I'm going to talk to you tonight about are the basal ganglia and the hippocampus. The basal ganglia is the, the core seat of your reward function and your innate drives. It's also deeply involved in decision making. The, uh, the hippocampus is the location of your memory formation, consolidation, and recall. Turning now to AI. There are two core principles which have led to the recent boom in AI. Also, just for fun, all images from now on are fully AI generated. <laughs> so, there are two core principles behind the recent boom in AI. The first is unsupervised predictive learning. This is the key methodology by which we train our AI systems today. This idea is incredibly simple. Given a sequence of data, any data, use all that you've seen up until now to try and predict the next element. In language, for instance, we can take all the words in a sentence and use this to try and predict the next word. This objective might seem very simple. <laughs> exactly, guys. This, <laughs> this objective might seem incredibly simple, but there is a very deep and underlying power to it. To get an intuition for why this is so, consider the sentence, the capital of France is Paris. To predict the word Paris, the AI needs some kind of knowledge of geography. In the sentence, the square root of 49 is seven. You have to know something about math. Crucially, all of the information is implicit within the sentence themselves. No human needs to explicitly label this data, saying, like, this is math data, you know, this is what you need to learn. Instead, everything is implicit. 
And this lets us train our AI systems on all of the data in the world, since almost all of it is entirely unlabeled. Fascinatingly, the brain uses almost an identical strategy in its to learn its sensory representations in the sensory cortices. Here, the brain is continually involved in predicting the next sensation you will experience. And when reality and its prediction collides, it generates prediction errors. The learning machinery of the cortex is designed to minimize these prediction errors over time. And to do so, it forms very deep and powerful representations about the world. The second key ingredient is scaling. In AI, bigger is better. We have developed empirical relationships, which we call scaling laws, which relate increases in the amount of neurons, aka the size of a neural network, and the amount of data points it's trained upon to predictable increases in performance. Fascinatingly, we see almost identical scaling behavior in the natural world as well, even with an analogous mathematical form. Across species, neuroscientists have managed to relate the number of neurons and neuron density in the brain to the observed intelligence of the species. The fact that we see almost identical behavior in, bra in brains and machines implies that this is some deep facet about intelligence. The core today's AI boom is fundamentally driven by the fact that we have figured out that if we perform unsupervised predictive learning at a very large scale, we can create general correlation learning machines, which can distill vast data sets into very powerful and generalizable representations, which can be used for almost any task. From the perspective of the brain, what we've done in AI so far is basically learn how to build a sensory cortex. This perspective then sheds light on the remaining steps on the road to artificial general intelligence. We simply have to look at what the remaining areas of the brain are and what they do. I'm going to talk about three core challenges that are left now. The first is reinforcement learning. This is the subfield of AI which studies how to learn by directly interacting with the world. Today's AI models are all very like the philosophical, philosophical thought experiment of a brain in a vat. It receives vast amounts of information inputted to it, but passively. It can never reach out and touch and interact with the world. However, if the AI is to ever learn entirely novel strategies, ideas, and insights, which are undreamt of in the human-derived data distribution, which we feed it, it has to be able to learn by directly interacting with the world. What we have found, and what the brain also does, is that by performing reinforcement learning on top of the powerful sensory representations we have already developed through unsupervised learning, this eliminates many of the inefficiencies and instabilities that plagued earlier attempts at RL. People are now applying reinforcement learning at the very largest scales to create AIs which can learn directly from the environment in a very stable and powerful way. Progress here is very rapid and is expected to continue for like the next few years. The second core problem is long-term memory. Today's AIs only have a short-term memory, which is called a context window, and is the length of the sequences that the AI is designed to process. Beyond that, the AI is completely memoryless. This makes it very hard for AIs to do long-term tasks, which exceed their context length. We've developed various strategies to help them do this. For instance, at the end of the context length, the AI can write a quick summary, telling what it did, and then pass this to sort of the next AI in line. But put yourself in the shoes of the AI for a second here. You are a complete amnesiac with, who can only remember the last 30 seconds of your life. You wake up. Somehow you've got to do some task which extends far longer than 30 seconds. Helpfully, the previous guy wrote a small thing about like, what they did, and you're expected to continue from that. While this works surprisingly well in practice, it is obviously like, fundamentally wrong, and there has to be greater solutions to this. What AIs need is the analog, artificial analog of the hippocampus, which is the region of your brain which handles exactly this. It handles memory formation, consolidation, and reasoning. If a hippocampus is destroyed, you end up precisely at this kind of amnesiac who can never remember anything beyond a short time window of a few minutes. By studying the hippocampus and getting insights into its function and its interactions with the cortex, we can attempt to build artificial hippocampi to augment existing AI systems and solve this core deficit. The final and third problem is that of continual learning. Today's AIs operate in two phases. There is training, where the AI receives a huge amount of data and learns from the data. And then there is inference, or deployment, where the AI's weights and knowledge are frozen, and we simply give it inputs and see what it outputs. This, humans, however, always learn online. There are no phases, training deployment phases for humans or any other animals. This lack causes subtle deficits in AI systems today. They slowly drift out of date as the world evolves, and their knowledge is frozen forever. This also makes it very hard to do long-term tasks, since these often require learning new information on the fly, consolidating that into new skills, and then applying those skills productively again. 
something that without continual learning, you simply cannot do. The brain has a clever set of mechanisms for carefully integrating new information while avoiding forgetting old information. For instance, almost all learning is extremely gated by saliency. For a random uneventful day, you will forget almost everything that you experienced. However, some key moments, which are accompanied by extremely positive or extremely negative emotions, will be seared into your memory forever. When you sleep and when you dream, your hippocampus is replaying old experiences to the cortex, helping prevent them from being forget forgotten or overridden. If we think about what happens when we put together these advances, which we're all currently working on, what do we end up with? We end up with an AI system which can learn directly from interacting with the environment without any human supervision, which can keep learning for and improving indefinitely as it receives new information about the world, and which is possessed with an extremely high capacity long-term memory, which enables coherence of thought and action over human relevant timescales, such as months, years, or even decades. When put like this, the prospect is really quite formidable. As a scientist, I am very excited by the current progress in AI and our also our growing understanding of the brain. However, as a human, it is naturally worrisome to think that we are very close to creating artificial systems which are smarter and potentially more powerful than ourselves. Our intelligence is fundamentally what separates us from other animals and has let us build this great civilization. By creating AIs, we will fundamentally create a new kind of being, one that can possibly compete or even outcompete us on the grand stage. Even if we successfully align our AI systems and make them fully friendly, there is always a strong risk we will end up relinquishing our agency and our control to these systems and end up as passive beneficiaries of an AI civilization we do not really understand. Unfortunately, I don't have all the answers here. I firmly believe that a greater understanding and study of AI systems is almost always good. I think that we must use the incredible malleability of AI minds that we observe in practice to create AIs that are not only smarter than us, but are vastly more moral and compassionate and selfless than we as humans, than we as humans, with our own ever-evolved animal drives for self-preservation and competition, than we can ever be. And I think that it's important that the gains from AI are shared relatively evenly, instead of only accruing to a few elite corporations or individuals. On a personal level, I just want to say that it's an incredibly exciting time, and that there is a very real prospect that within the next few decades, we'll resolve some of the age-old questions of our minds, our brains, and ourselves. Thank you. Thank you.